Hi, welcome to the next in our series of Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. Today we're going to talk about how transmission lines can be used as passive components. And by passive, I mean inductors and capacitors. Now, this is just, isn't something you would do in a typical breadboard-type laboratory, hook up a BNC cable, which is a form of transmission line to a breadboard circuit. But this is actually fairly common when you're making printed circuit boards at fairly high frequencies to use transmission line sections as inductors and capacitors. So how does this work? Uh, re we remember that we have stubs, and these are sections of transmission lines that are either open-circuited, so the reflection coefficient is 1, or short-circuited, so the reflection coefficient is minus 1. And I've written all over here the various equations we've come up with um, over the course of this lecture series that describes the waves on the transmission line, the reflection coefficients, and um, the concept of impedance, which is the function of the position on the transmission line, for these two cases where the uh, reflection coefficients are 1 or minus 1. And we remember the input impedance, which is the impedance at this point, where the length of transmission is some variable that we're going to call z here, is given by this equation right here. And it turns out that um, you can basically look at two cases of this. Um, in the case of the short-circuited stub, um, you come up with an equation that looks like this. In the um, occasion of an open-circuited stub, you come up with an equation that looks like this. And both of these are tangent equations. There are a couple things to notice about this. That the, uh, the value of the impedance is purely imaginary. And a purely imaginary impedance is a reactive element. It has no resistance. Either it's either inductance or capacitance. The value of the impedance varies in proportionality with the impedance of the line stub you're using and also this tangent which is proportional to beta the propagation coefficient and the length of the line. So let's take a look at this. If we plot the complex impedance in ohms as a function of position on the line um, from zero all the way out to one wavelength, what does it look like? Well for the short circuited stub um, which is given by the tangent equation here, you see that this tangent graph, remember, goes from 0 at 0 degrees or 0 radians all the way up to becoming undefined at pi over 2 radians, which is a fraction of a wavelength, um, because remember it's sine divided by cosine, and at pi over 2 or 90 degrees, a cosine is 0, so the tangent becomes infinite. Um, and then it drops down to a negative number until it rises again. Well, we know that the impedance of an inductor is j omega l and thus we do some simple algebra and we can find that in certain cases the transmission line shorted stub depending on length acts like an inductor so everything above this dashed line right here is inductance so if the red line which is the impedance of the stub is above the dashed line then your transmission line is going to act like an inductor. Uh, for capacitance, we know we have a negative sign. So everything that's below this line, in other words, down here on this side of the dashed line, which is at zero, the transmission line shorted stub is going to act like a capacitor. So what this means is depending on the length of the shorted stub, it can either act like an inductor or a capacitor. So not only is it a circuit element, you can change the value of the inductance or capacitance or turn it from an inductor into a capacitor just by changing the length of its z for some given frequency and characteristic impedance of the stub you're making. And you see, since the open stub down here has a cotangent function, it looks the same, but it's just shifted again. Everything on this side of the zero line negative corresponds to capacitance everything on this side positive reactance corresponds to an inductance so let's take a look at how this works because I know this can be be a little bit confusing <laughs> in that last explanation so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a section of transmission line and we're going to put a short that short is this vertical line I've drawn right here and we're going to essentially see what happens as we move that that the essentially lengthen the line. So as this short circuit gets longer and longer, what does it look like? Well, we know it starts off with very short length and positive and as an inductor right here. So it's essentially a very, very small inductor. So let's animate this and see what happens as we make that line longer. And you'll see this black line right here move across. That corresponds on the graph to the length of the line. So ready? Here we go.
And so what you're able to see from this, essentially, is that as the line moves and gets longer, the inductance gets bigger and bigger. Now at this point right here, it stops being an inductor and starts being a very large capacitor. So as we change the length of the line, the line gets longer, but the capacitor shrinks in value. Same thing as we go to the second half, and we're on the second half of the, the wavelength of the line here. It's an inductor, and as it, the line gets longer, the inductor gets bigger. It gets a little bit longer, it changes over back to a capacitor, and the value gets smaller as we get to the longer line. So as you can see, you really can tune the length of the transmission line from an inductor to a capacitor and back again just by changing the length of a stub.